So we left off talking about the various regions of North Carolina in terms of physical, remember, physical geography. How are the parts of North Carolina different physically? We're talking about nature, physical landscape, weather patterns, and then man-made. How are the different parts different in terms of how we interact? Do we build cities? Do we build beach-type communities with a bunch of stores? Is it agriculture? Do we put golf courses? Do we put airports? Do we put nothing at all? Do we put things that associate with our former culture? In the uh, the Scots-Irish established residency in a certain area, do they bring with them certain habits and behaviors and ideas? And then organize the society that way. So let's just talk about natural and in terms of natural physical geography of North Carolina, there are four distinct regions. I am talking while I'm setting the timer that I forgot to set. There are the mountains, the Piedmont, the inner coast, and the tidewater. The mountains are the mountains. They connect to the Appalachian Mountains. Piedmont is a French word for Piedmont. Mont means mountain. Pied means foot. So it's the foothills, the, the hills leading up to the mountains. So this is an elevated area. This is where I have lived for most of my time. And this is where the majority of North Carolina residents live in the Piedmont re region. And then you have the coastal plain, which is close to the coast. But it is a plane. We're going to show you a picture in a second that's going to make this really easy to understand. And then you clearly have the tidewater or the beach. Four different regions of North Carolina. Four distinctly different natural locations. And because of those physical differences, different economies, different people have moved to those specific areas. Clearly, you wouldn't start a farm in the mountains or on the beach. The Piedmont and the coastal plain are the best places for agriculture and farming. So if we think about the very beginning of North Carolina, where are most people going to live? in this area. So if we're starting the very, get, very beginning, this is where the people live, and we fast forward hundreds and hundreds of years, this area has a head start. So clearly, it's not a surprise that the heavy population and most of the development in North Carolina is in this region, not the mountains, because as we said before, physical barriers prevent the flow of goods, people, and ideas. This is a physical barrier. And this also, obviously, the, the Outer Banks is a physical barrier, but a physical barrier or a physical challenge, which is another thing, it is hard to farm on the beach. It is hard to farm in this area. So it's not just physical barriers preventing me from getting through. It's just things that make life hard. Now, although living on the beach seems pretty easy, but it's not easy necessarily to grow crops. And that's very important hundreds of years ago. So this area has an advantage and this area will, that's mainly the physical geography again, is the reason why a lot of the things that exist today is because of the physical geography. And so mountains, the Piedmont, the foothills, not mountains, but not flat. Then you have the coastal plain, a plain as in not an airplane, a plain as in flat, a plain like in geometry, connecting to geography. And then you have the tidewater, which is basically the beach. And then here it is in a topographic or a visual format, the mountains down to the Piedmont, down to the coastal plain, down to the tie water, which runs into the sea. Level well, those are four distinct differences in North Carolina's physical geography. There it is again, showing it to you so that you can see it all at once. See it? There's your color coding. Very cool. All the different counties. How to describe the various regions in terms of man May. We're not talking now about the physical things that we can see and touch and feel in nature and in the environment. We're talking about how human beings have adjusted. Now, one of the most important or most significant man-made changes to our geography, man-made changes to the physical environment is the triangle area here in Orange County, Wake County, and Durham County, or Chapel Hill, Durham, Raleigh, RDU, the triangle this is where a large amount of the population, this is where the cities, this is where the roads, this is where the technology firms, we have turned what was once upon a time a giant forest, and then what once upon a time was agriculture land, now to airports and cities and universities and skyscrapers and houses everywhere. This place has exploded in the last 50 years. This is a huge difference in terms of man-made. It's probably, if you're talking about North Carolina and you're talking about a man-made physical environment, this is the most notable, right? We're not necessarily going to talk about the mountains because those are mountains. That's not man-made. That's natural. And we don't talk about the beach necessarily, although we have shifted around the beach a little bit. I mean, we put piers and we've put stores and restaurants and hotels, but we haven't really significantly changed the beach. When you think of the beach, you think of 
the beach. You don't really think of the hotels. And when you think of the mountains, there are hotels and there's shops and there's stores and there's restaurants. But still, when you think about the mountains, you think of the mountains. But when you think of a man-made physical environment, so the physical environment of North Carolina has been a change by man and it's significant. We think, number one, is the research triangle, the RTP here in North Carolina there at Chapel Hill, Durham, and Raleigh. That is the most significant. All right. So if we rewind the clock, let's talk some more about physical. We're going to go backwards and talk about physical, but this also is going to connect to man-made. What? So physical and man-made, we've already talked about this. Physical geography and human geography often connect. The physical geography and how we interact with that physical geography, we can change it in certain things. So if you go way, way back millions of years ago, sea levels were a lot higher. And the actual sea level was all the way up to the coastal plain. Huh? What? So here is the beach, but if we were to rewind millions of years ago when the sea waters were higher, then this was all underwater. All this area right here, this was, let's go back, let's get my pen out, and let me write real quick with the pen. This was all underwater millions of years ago. And so if this is all underwater, technically this area is the tide water. That area is the beach. Now, fast forward to today, the water levels have rescinded. And so now the ocean's here. Now this land is above water. This land is above water. But if this once upon a time was below water, now it's not. Well, if this used to be the beach, well, it still technically is the beach. There still is a lot of sandy soil in this area. And so when the sea levels go down, we still have sand in this area. And we have what are called the sand hills. And so that's cool. That's neat. So, so what? Who cares? There's sand there. Oh, we're talking about man-made physical geography of North Carolina. What makes it unique? And because of the sand hill, because of the sand and that you can move it around really easily, it makes this a premium, number one, perfect place to build a golf course because you can move the sand and then put grass over top of it and you can shape the landscape to any way you want. Now, if you want to shape the landscape of a mountain, it's very hard. Why? Because this is all rocks and mountains and you got to dig into it and you got to crush it. It's very expensive, costs lots of money to to change the terrain. And even here, it's going to be very expensive with soil and to build on top of soil. It's very cheap and very easy to move sand. You've been on the beach before. You've built, built sand. You can build a sand castle in a couple of seconds. It's not a problem. Same thing with building a golf course. It's very easy to move the sand around and create really distinct, unique strategies and a fun golf course. And so here in the Sand Hills, we have Pinehurst, one of the most famous golf courses in America. One of the number one places the U.S. Open has played there. If you're not a golf fan, you're like, oh, who cares? So but again, we're talking about just knowing that man interacts with the land to create our own unique physical environment. And that's one of the famous examples from North Carolina, the sand hills and the golf courses created there. So what? I want golf. Yeah, I get you. But whatever. Here you go. Again, so unique examples of man-made uh, interaction. So the research triangle, RTP over there in Durham, Chapel and Raleigh. The cities clearly are an example of man-made uh, interactions of the physical environment. As I mentioned, the piers and the hotels and the restaurants. And then obviously like people think, oh, well, that's a farm. That's natural. No, it's not. Do you think this is the way it was when the earth was created? Uh, did you think God just said, boom, create perfect rows of corn? That did not example. Men have created these farms in perfect rows. This is what is natural. These just random trees. What this once was, was this. So all of this was a bunch of trees. And then man goes in and chops the trees down, levels the ground, plants the seeds, and grows rows after row of corn. That's man-made. I know when we see a farm, we see agriculture, we think of, well, that's natural. That's physical geography. Yeah, part because it is ecology and it is plants, but it also is an example of how humans are interacting with the land. Now, let's jump to our next presentation here and let's roll. Understand the human and physical characteristics of a region in North Carolina and the United States physical, cultural, political. Ethnic makeup. Let's talk about ethnic makeup because this might be a confusing word to you. So when we're talking about ethnic makeup, so physical, duh, we understand the characteristics of that. And we understand the cultural. Oh, we got sweet tea. Well, for me, coming from the north, moving to North Carolina, one of the unique cultural characteristics is what the people in North Carolina eat. 
Chicken biscuits, never heard of it before in my life until I was what, 28 years old and moved to North Carolina and Virginia and people were eating chicken for breakfast. Who eats chicken for breakfast? Clearly, the people of the South like to eat chicken and biscuits for breakfast and they drink a giant big sweet tea. We have tea in the North, but often the tea that is consumed is just that bitter regular tea. I'm not a tea guy. I'm not a sweet tea guy, but sweet tea is a cultural thing. So culture is a lot of different things, food, dress, behavior, language religious beliefs, but food and dining is an example of it. political organization, political beliefs, and then ethnic makeup. What is ethnic makeup? An ethnic group or ethnicity is a socially defined category of people who identify with each other based on a common ancestral, social, cultural, or national experience. So we're talking about an ethnic group, a group that has some sort of common history, common culture, some sort of social common bond where they all feel like we are part of the same people. And in the example here, we've got the Germans who moved to America and they all have the same, maybe they all dress the same, they had the same language when they originally moved here, they all spoke German or maybe same complexion, maybe they have the same beliefs, the same religion, and they ate the same food. And so that's something that, that we brought over. And then you have African-American and you have uh, Mexican or Hispanic, which so that would be clear. If we went to Texas, one of the ethnic groups would be Mexican-American. And we would see that in their religion. We would see that in their language. We would see that in their food. We would see that in their beliefs about family. And we would they would have. Obviously, the category of people who had similar history and ancestry coming from South America and Central America, same social beliefs and connections and cultural beliefs and experiences. Skip through all this. You can pause that if you want. So real easy here. Geographic areas differ according to distinct regional characteristics. So these areas on the map are different. These different regions are different based on physical, culture, political, economic and ethnic. So we'll try to go through all these as fast as we can, but I mean, it's common sense. Different places on the earth are different and there are a bunch of different categories. Right here's the easiest one, physically. So there's mountains over here, there's a coastal plain here. You live on the beach, you live near a lake. So physical features are different, duh. Okay, sorry. Cultural, so again, going back to that picture of German. So this area is deeply influenced by German people. So they bring with them German beliefs about government, German beliefs about language, German beliefs about how you uh, build farms and how you structure society, German beliefs about uh, food. And then you have well, Hispanic again. So if I go to these areas, if I come to the German areas, maybe I can find a Mexican restaurant. But if I'm looking for different parts of the country to find the best Mexican, the most authentic Mexican food, you would more than likely want to go to Southwest America where you could find really good Mexican-American food that is deeply influenced by Mexican heritage and cooked by Mexican-Americans that have been passed down year after year after year and century after century through different generations. So there is an example of different areas have different cultures. If I go to New New York, I'm going to experience different cultures. I might, I mean, New York in itself has its own culture. The New Yorker attitude has its own experience. If I go to Southern California, aside from the race, the color, the religious, the people of Los Angeles have a culture into themselves. The people that live in the cold, that wake up every morning and shovel five feet of snow and scrape their windows and wake up freezing cold up here in New England. And they have a toughness to them that they have to fight every day. And there's a culture of that. And then you go to the places where it's much easier to live and where it's warm every day. And there's a different culture to that. So you find different cultures and different beliefs for many different things based on the physical, based on their ancestry, based on their ethnicity, based on the religious views. You go to different places, you have different cultural views. Here you're going to see different religions. Baptist, Catholic, different areas have different beliefs, and that's going to shape who moves there and how people get along in those different areas. If you are part of the majority, if you're a Baptist, then it's really easy to live in Tennessee. If you do not believe in God and you are an atheist, you may have trouble living in Tennessee. If everyone around you making laws and creating the rules and teaching in your schools believes in the Baptist religion and you do not believe in Jesus Christ whatsoever, or maybe you are a Muslim or you are a Hindu or you are a Buddhist, you may struggle to have the best life in that society surrounded by people that have different views than you. Maybe, maybe not. Here we'll see again different cultural views. And you think that being against gay marriage has nothing to do with ignorance. So this is a bit of a, you can do with whatever you want to 
So in these green counties in North Carolina, they voted against gay marriage. And in the red counties, they said that gay marriage was okay. And these red counties also link up with where all the universities are. You can interpret this however you want. Uh, I think this is probably not appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate. It's fine. It's definitely okay to have these conversations, but I'm not really trying to start an argument over gay marriage. This is kind of old because today it's completely legal in America. Not a big deal. Again, we have Democrats and Republicans that have different viewpoints. You can see all these different viewpoints. Why is that important? Well, if I go to a red state, then in this red state, these are the views. If I don't agree with these views, I may struggle and not like my life in those places. If I believe in some of this stuff, then I'm going to want to go to a Democrat state or a state that shares some of my common beliefs because politically, different regions have different views. And typically people are going to want to live around people that share common views it makes life easier because you don't want to argue and fight with people all the time. So you find your views and then you match it up. All right, I'm going to go to blue states. No, I agree with the red stuff. So I want to go to the red states. Now, it's actually a little bit more to that than this. So let's stop and come back. 